they, they, oh man, they might. This so far it's Grind for it? Harith. They, no. they go oh. Alpha. It should be Harith, and then they should ban the Lunox. So no Roger. We're not considering the Roger here. No. Uh, I mean, it's not going to be utilized as flex anyways, right? So might as well just go for Harith here. Yeah, it should work out here. Could be the play, and. You have the double zone combo, right? The Zaman Force and the uh, the Glorious Pathway. Opening a lot of oh, avenues of approach coming in for Team Liquid. And against the Gatot, again, if you're a bit too passive and you have no control, it's going to be difficult. So I think something that's dominant, something with good wave clear, can be critical in just really stopping the, this Gatot from just having all the space in the world to set up for a play. And as predicted by Mirko, Coach Mirko, Harith. Up. Not a coach. Oh, and the Lunox man. Okay, maybe a little bit of a coach. <laughs> Semi coach Mirko predicts it once more. Now for Dewa though. I think it's looking like more of a front to back. Generally, it's just gonna be the Hylos moving forward and then the Nolan maybe hiding in the sides coming in towards the back line. I feel like they have to try and get something strong in the mid lane too. Because against the Vexana and Gatot. It's gonna be hard to match with the wave clear and with the alpha, right? A fighter being in the jungle. The last thing they want is for something similar to game number two to happen where the fighter Famous. can go in and farm up and steal away <laughs> and deny farm from their it's assassin. Really they need flavor fave in tip top shape. Mm -hmm. That's why they banned out the Faramis here. That was also their ban in the previous draft. I don't know if they want to actually go for the Lita ban again. Oh, this time they don't have the Lunox. Oh, it's the Arlet though. <laughs> Put some respect on the MVP of game two's name right there in the banning phase. No Arlote for you, Cerizo. Now without an Arlote to really make the place happen. What does he want to go with here? The Teruza is still open. And technically, we've seen that it, it can be impactful. Like the Carmilla though garners respect as well from Dewa. For Team Liquid, what's it gonna be? Ideally, one more Thank you, frontline. Thank you, your, you know, follow-up tool maybe, or perhaps you're thinking they want to go with and and show something in the mid lane first. Just flex the high lows. I think the safe choice would be Valentina, but they can now obviously just go for the O. Oh, oh. I was saying maybe Aurora again, but they decide to go for the Yeve, and the Yeve won against the Valent, uh, the Vexana just earlier. Remember Geek Fam, oh. a boy versus Sans. This was a similar composition too, right? Fovius. Okay, no Fovius, but Nolan. They had the Vexana as well. Mm -hmm. With the Mathilda. Oh, but it was against the Hylos. It was. Sure was. Now though, this is a dangerous situation to be in for team for, for Dewa here. If the Gorgeous Pathway gets used up, they're already slowed. You add the Void Crystal on top of that. It's a lot of slows coming in. So the the, the rush place that they were trying to use in game number two can get completely mitigated, man. I am the priestess of Primal That's the Lightning. Coming down for the XP the should be guns. for Cerizo. And the That's last pick for the Harry. Oh, to deal with the high loss. That's the standard way to deal with the high loss. TLID. What do they go for? Up against this carry, Edith. The Toad Katja as well. Honestly, does the x not look good here? Oh, the x against the high loss Rome? fighters? I think it has potential, man. Or do they go to Rizla again? That's a more straightforward approach, too. But. I feel like the Teresa can have value because of the catch potential, right? The last yep. thing they want is to get kited away from when they're going for a clash. So the Teresa, if they want to really force Dewa to respawn and force all the defensive tools out, or if they really feel like they want more flexibility, more surprise, more control, the x -Borg can be used to kind of survive against the carry as well. Ooh, it's the neither. answer is neither. It's going to be the Lolita. Oh, wait, that's actually pretty. That's it's so really good, good here. Edith, Vixana, and carry. It was banned two games in a row, by the way. Just saying. Lolita, damned by Dewa, and then banned by Dewa again. Both game one and game two. Ooh, this is probably the worst comp for the Lolita to be left open. Oh, man. Vexana carry and Edith. So much value. I mean, technically, the carry can still go purify, right? If that's the issue. The board, the bounce back. The shield. Understood, understood. Yeah. yeah, to get out of this uh, uh, CC, yes, you can go for the purify. That's what he went for, but... It's about them just staying in place and getting the bulwark down. Then they can only just eat that damage back up. And again, if they want to kite back away and wait till the bulwark is down and all that, the glorious pathway, that's where it comes through. Uh, we saw that Fnatic Onyx had this combo earlier, Hylas and Lolita, but it didn't work out for them. I think good coordination is required to here to really make this work. The, the Hylas needs to be the main front line. Them. The Lolita needs to be a bit more elusive, a bit more reactive, right? It needs to be given the time to just
just time out the Numeran Blast and the Bulwark. Let's see if it works, ladies and gentlemen, this combination coming through for TLID in the final game of the final match of week number five. Everything is on the line now for Dewa United if they still want to have a better chance of making it into the playoffs and that upper bracket slot in for TLID. Let's get in into the land of dawn. And by the way, if you look at the composition, I don't think it's any coincidence that for the most part, a lot of the damage coming in from Team Liquid is going to be magical. It's a one way to kind of counter the Gatlet because the reduction that he gets is physical damage reduction only. Magical damage will still cut through him like a hot knife. Emblems by Indie Home though right here. Tenacity for the Hylas with the Vitality. More HP, more regen. And for the Yeeve, that's a rupture too, so a lot of penetration. Oh, Moezza's got to be careful. Pops in the damage, Pavian. The Usurper is here, coming down. Not enough damage just yet. Moezza's is turning it around and he survives. Wow. It's no fracture for Fabian right there. With the fracture, that was a done deal. But unfortunately, he was forced to stand there and just basic attack. One more minion would have given him that necessary power spike, but unfortunately, not there. And now for Dewa, the audience prediction favors them now. 56%. Oh. Man, they just swamp, they just bandwagoning, man. Oh, oh. Fabian coming down, Fracture. You call it, Arashi, all you needed was a Fracture. Ray actually goes with the Fear of Alpha. Good taunt over to two. Get in the combo, that was a living with a sliver of HP again. The unkillable man. Ray has been a monster, by the way, on this alpha, right? Game number two, game number three. There's so many moments that he was able to outplay TLID in these small skirmishes. Three wins, one loss. I'm not going to pretend like I can percentage that. 25% win rate. No, 75% win rate. There, there you go. go. Right. Quick maths. Slow maths coming in from Eternal, but Moesa <laughs> coming in fast, though. Yeah. Has, it doesn't have to revitalize, actually, so this should be free for Fabian, unless Cerezo gets it. No. The Usurper claims it with a Retribution. Absolutely more in line with what we are used to seeing from Team Liquid. Fabian on the Nolan, man. One of the first heroes he popped off on when he arrived onto the MPL. And you're Ooh. seeing why it's such a big problem. He has skill now with the Yeep, though. Seeing him kind of do well. Ooh. Able to zone the Vexana away. So we talked about the trio mid presence without backup. Ooh, oh, Kaze! Whoa, Kaze is so low. Witty was waiting in that bush. So smart as well how they play this mid lane. Yaskiel is in the bottom side, keeps on zoning. Meanwhile, Aaron Shiki doing that to Watt, really bullying him up top. But yeah, using the angles to force Vexana to move to Lolita. He's not having the greatest of times. And so is Watt, right? Watt's not also having a great time. Force that recall, gonna be able to tragically lose a little bit of those turrets, those, those minions rather. And again, Dewa open up and look for a moment Ooh. in that mid lane. But now they're trading in to this gold lane, Aaron Shiki. Should be able to escape. Gets the taunt down though, Mueza. Ooh, Ray is playing it really patient there. Waiting for the long-term investment to pay off. But he was staying there in that bush for quite a while despite all the action. Now getting rewarded with a gold buff. But with the rotation coming in, can we even get a play? Whoa. Just poking right. Mueza down. Mm -hmm. Wow, looking at the laning again in the gold lane, I don't Shiki, I believe he was able to deny one or two uh, gold cards away from Watt. That is definitely not how he wanted the lane to go, Watt. With this carry, it's going to be critical, but we've seen again this whole, this whole matchup. The carry will need to be doing damage, but he's going to be zoned away by the Yi potentially. Oh, where is it going in for the taunt? Onto Aran though, maybe they can actually burst him down as a vengeance coming down from Aran. Spear of Alpha defensively, good to now blast actually catch Mueza. But he's still gonna be going in with the Eternal Guard after the map, but now and onward. Oh, the oh. at the real world manipulation gets comboed in, re mobilized. Mueza taken down. And Teresa, unfortunately, even with the Primal Wrath, he can't deal damage. Not while the Bulwark is up and active. Up top, it's a win to Aaron Shiki zoning Watt away. A win across the board for the Cavalry. One for one trade, but it looks like Ray is the one around the turtle. He's still going to be able to pick that up. Fabian looks for a cross map play here, picking up that purple buff. He should be able to get it. And there it is. Who was that worth it for? I think it's quite even, but Team Liquid winning the fight, getting all that gold in the hands of Iron Shiki, and still, for the most part, only losing a turtle, I feel like it's worth it for them. It's more in line with their win condition, and it's two birds with one stone. They shut down Watt. They kind of augment Aran's tank ability. As of right now, running that uh, Vengeance, it's on a lower cooldown that will revitalize, but he really 
struggles to stay survive to survive long enough here with all the shred and the true damage coming in from Ray as well. So that could really be the idea. And with Watt out of the picture, that's where Faivian can focus all his efforts in finding Ks. Running with the flicker, he's gonna be able to force that out multiple times. Aaron is a almost a 1k gold ahead. It's slipping a little bit here with Watt being able to pick up those minions in the mid lane. But again, right? Aaron recalling their understanding and being very confident with the fact that he's able to take control over that lane. It's only a matter of time when he pops off. Dell United, what's the game plan? Do they look for a shutdown onto Aaron here to try and prevent that from happening? They're gonna play around the timers, because as of right now, if a fight breaks out, you saw how it worked out earlier. Even with the Avatar of the Guardian, you can't cancel out the real world manipulation. It's one of the strong suits of the Yeeve. So if they get roped and they get caught in that real manipulation and they don't have enough damage to burst down through the shield and HP bar of your Heskio, they're going to be stuck in a long drawn out fight where the, the carry won't be able to be as active and there's a bulwark to stop the damage from both the carry and the Edith. So they have to time it well as Sorizo. Huh? Try to go for the cut of the wave, but he should be taken down. The Primal Wrath coming down. Good fracture. Real world manipulation committed down to actually take him out. So. They will have the resource advantage going up top. Avatar coming down. Oh, and the eternal guard. Oh, Aaron oh. Trick is to no chance. You can't take that much burst. That was a great trade for Dewa United, right? A man ahead. Aaron Shiki is not in the picture. And the turtle just so happens to be positioned in the top lane as well. It should be a free turtle over to Dewa United. And that gold should shift over to the gods as well. Interesting situation there. The play for Sorisa to cut kind of pulled everyone to try and punish him. Mm -hmm. It's a great choice for Dewa though to try and get the, the play. But you would expect that Iron would know that eyes are on him. But with that sequence of events, Dewa get the turret as well. And immediately, the goal difference, once again, is neutralized. This game is razor close. It's classic Sorizo, right? If you guys remember him when he made his debut, Uranus, Esmeralda always cutting the waves, Paquito even. Mm -hmm. Probably a familiar situation for him to see when he's looking at how that was playing out. And look at this. Team Liquid, despite having the Assassin, they're the ones sticking together in that mid lane. They didn't let Yeskill clear it on his own. They are the ones that are spreading out apart and getting more effective movement right here because everyone is doing something. Pushing the wave, getting extra farm. And you can see the gold lead from a 200. It's kind of extending up to like 600. But for the most part, Iron and Fabian, the main carries on the side of Team Liquid, does still have the advantage. So that is something that Team Liquid want to hold on to. All good. It looked a bit scary there with Mueza, but there was no one to follow it up. Nope, not just yet. Watt's going to be able to push in that lane in the top side. What is this? Mueza, is he looking for a setup here? He does have his ultimate down. Actually not available just yet, and you can see, maybe that's exactly why Team Ligrid are grouping around, and particularly near the turrets, in case the Avatar of the Guardian comes through. They have no vision on Mueza right here. He's doing a great job just waiting around in the bushes, so the threat of him out of nowhere arriving from the air is very feasible, very tangible. Fabian now going for a bit of a split push play situation as the next Lord is coming up. Sorizo already in position to try and alter that situation, but Team Liquid, if they can force a fight here without Sorizo, this could be the window that they can use. Is this it? See, it's not Fabian going for that split push. They're trying to handle Sorizo on the side lane, right? TLID, wow. they usually play the macro so well, but it looks like Dell United have more pressure on these side lanes. Meanwhile, Aran going over the board, traffic going on to Ray, but he's still going to be able to find the retribution. And Aran Chiki jumps into the Zaman Force. Avatar oh. getting Moeza out. It's still going to be the real world of Lightship, but Ray gets his spear up. Alpha Witty gets this play. Fabian comes in to get Ray. Sarizo oh. with a flicker onward. Aaron purifies out of it. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, Fabian tries to go for a clear, but it's a win for Dewa. Fabian going straight for the trades as we expected, but won't have time to go for the orange. And look at Sorizo, oh. man, immediately reading the habits through. Oh, no. Case. Looking for information. Oh, Case is a dead man. Fabian, one, two. Oh, what a combo. Two starts it with a fracture to get the passive to follow it up and then sneaks past Sorizo like he's nothing. Sorizo doesn't have flicker, so he shouldn't be able to get this. But it does give them an advantage, right? It does give them a little bit more of a fighting chance. But honestly, that entire lore take, 
It felt like Dewey United were outsmarting TLID just a bit because of Sorizo. It seems like they were. Team Liquid, you would expect them to punish Sorizo first when the timing is right, but the timing on Sorizo's movement also is just orchestrated so much better. Yeah. And if you look at the items though, real quick, Wishing Lantern for both the mid laners, no Enchanted Talisman, no Mana Boots. The focus has, has shifted here from spamming those spells to having that one massive moment with your spells. And that is what both mid laners are looking for. Oh, is Fabian gonna get his purple buff? Ray is in the vicinity. He also does still have that retribution, but they're not gonna go for it. Iran was still able to zone him out. But meanwhile, Watt is busy in the top lane. Wow. But that's it. I really think it might be the God of Pressure, man. Literally. They're just not really confident in sending out anyone with that mobility to solo defend, just in case. Just like that. They're just concerned about the potential engagers and Team Liquid. They're allowing Dewa to get the space. Look at this. Even in the bottom lane, the minions are taking the turret down as Sorizo lends a hand. Whoa. This is 11 minutes, guys, and they're losing most of their turrets now. Only the one in the mid lane standing there. Well played, man. Really well played by Dewa United here. They're seeing their improvement live as well. Up against CLID, they rise to the occasion. Oh, oh man. Fabian is waiting in that bush. Canceling his recalls. Let's see if they will actually read it out. The crowd also waiting for a <laughs> moment. Seems everybody's holding their breath. No, not Case again. Please, not Case again. He's had enough. Fabian's not recalling. Oh. Go for the angle. On to Case again. Fabian finds it and escape. Oh, Gets oh. out the Spear of Alpha. Fabian with the great escape. What an angle. Now Ray's going to be trying to use the Spear of Alpha already. The real world manipulation locks him down. It is Ray against the world trying to survive, but the horse stomps him on his head as he's unconscious. Aaron gets in to dish out the last bit of damage. Wow, Fabian. Patience, right? Patience. He nearly went in for the recall, but the fact was, Yeheskill was able to oh. open up the map, give him information to make that incredible play. Without Kaze in the picture, TLID, it was a green light for them to go in for the advance, go in for the team fight, and take three members down in return. Look at them as now steamrolling over Dewa United structures, while Fabian is very quick to the Lord. Just like that, Lord and two mid turrets. Gold advantage though isn't that high, but Fabian with the POD. What in the world is going on, man? We see assassins, and usually it's all about the mechanics. It's all about the flashy moments. But Fabian, it's the big brain approach. These so traps, good. these rotations. The guy is so good. Now the Lord coming through, 1k gold lead. Team Liquid are gonna get at least two turrets. The wave on the top side isn't even managed just yet. It is definitely gonna take it, get taken down. And now Aaron Shiki picks up a Divine Glaive, so he already has the Holy Crystal earlier on. Now with the Divine Glaive, Arashi. The longer the game goes, the more important the goal has become in outputting the damage, the more value Weedy will end up having on the Bulwark. In that one team fight, we saw Watt jump in to try and save the day, but the Bulwark immediately stonewalls him. Now playing the defense game against a Yeev, this is a tough situation to be in for Dewa United. Lord coming in in the mid lane, that's an enhanced Lord. Meanwhile, up top, Fabian is going to try to manipulate the waves for the second wave to come in. Bottom lane, no waves to play with. Liquid still playing around with it. Sorizo getting bursted down quite a bit. The Numenon Blast towards oh! in with a flicker. Connecting on the three, but there's no follow up. Oh, the fracture gets rid of OSRA. Ray. Goes up the Spear of Alpha, but again, it is Fabian, the Usurper, who gets the kill. Moving away from it again. Aaron Shiki deals with Sorizo. 2 1 TLID. And at the very end here, the Cavalry's charge was just too much for Dewa United to handle. Unfortunately, today, the gods will have to bow down to the Cavalry, who literally utilized a horse in this game to charge into the base. By the way. <laughs> they started slow, they were stuttering around. But then once they saw the opportunity, they found that moment, everything came crashing down for Dewa United. You can see the disappointment in the face of Coach Ryzen. It was a great attempt. It was possible. For a small moment, it was possible. Yep. But Team Liquid says no. Team Liquid says sabar.